Welcome back to the Alabama Film Room. Week 11 of the college football season. I'm Lauren Sisler. This is John Parker Wilson. Alabama coming off a huge win over LSU. 10-0. And I say huge win because when you put up a defensive performance like that, that's big time. Would you say this is one of the best Alabama defenses under Nick Saban? Yeah, I don't think there's any question. Uh, one of the tops. I mean, coming out against a solid running back in Leonard Fournette, holding 35 yards, only allowing six first downs from the LSU team. I mean, you can't say enough about how well the, the, the defense has played. Created some turnovers. You know, they didn't score a touchdown, but they created those turnovers, uh, which definitely led to Alabama uh, winning the game. Okay, now when you look at the Alabama offense, they struggled at times. Obviously, the LSU defense, a strong defense. But we got to start with Jalen Hurts. Obviously, the interception kind of changed the momentum of the game, and this at this point was scoreless at 0-0. Yeah, the first play or, or the first drive of the game coming out, throwing an interception is never good. But I think the way – like we talked about our defense played was the difference in the game. And then the struggles we had through the first three quarters, the two drives we had at the end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter, uh, in the fourth quarter with over 10 plays in each drive, that's what you want to see if you're an Alabama team. When it's fourth quarter, you got to come out, you got to make them pay. It's a, it's a mantra for the team. Coach Cochran, Coach Saban talk about it all year long, and they were able to win the game in the fourth quarter. But like you said, Jalen Hurts throwing a pick, uh, first drive. Let's go to it right here. Third and 10, something you never want to be in, especially backed up you know, inside your own 20. Just an errant throw. Comes up uh, and just misses him high. I think trying to get the ball to Calvin Ridley. We'll see him just rolling out, straight roll out. See a high level. Then Calvin Ridley coming right here. Damon Harris is sealing off the front. But I think this just gets away from him. Uh, you can obviously see he's trying to throw the ball to this area of the field. I think maybe this, this defensive guy gets in his way a little bit because a lot of times you'll see the quarterback just stay on the run. He has to pull up, and I think that's what leads to this very unusual turnover from Jalen Hurts. Okay, John Parker, I want to fast forward now to the second half. The first possession for Alabama, they go for the deep ball. Now, of course, it stalled. They went fourth and one, didn't convert. But I think the biggest thing that we can look at here is kind of how the coverage has changed for LSU, and it kind of opened things up for Alabama. Yeah. I think this is an adjustment you see from Coach Kiffin coming out at halftime. We'll see the, the fake right here from the quarterback and then just a two-man route, route downfield. But, but hitting this ball, not hitting it, obviously it helps out when you get a big chunk like this. But this is designed also to, to soften the defense. We're running the ball. We know we're going to run the ball. Only completed 10 passes. But Jalen Hurts dropping back, setting up, delivering a really good stride to R.D.R. Stewart here who gets behind. We'll see it on the – on this, this angle right here of the safeties, watch them come down. Everybody's getting downfield on the play fake. And when he decides, when the safety decides to, that it's a play, it's too late. He's already committed. And Aradaris does a good job of selling the run right here and then get behind them. You've got to have this on offense, especially with how much you're running the ball. You've got to be able to throw the ball, hit these big chunks, soften up the defense uh, for later on in the game when the running game obviously is going to take over as it did in this game. Okay, and John Parker, obviously Alabama only in the end zone one time, but it was one time enough to give them the, the big win over LSU. Three key plays to set up this touchdown drive. It was 12 plays, 90 yards. Take us through that for us. Yeah, so 90, 90 yards when the game's on the line right here. Not a lot of scoring going on. We know we got to march the ball down the field. I think as, as if we did have the struggles earlier in the game, this is what you hang your hat on. And when you go into these games against Auburn or the playoff games of the SEC Championship, these are the kind of drives where you can look back and say, hey, we can get it done. We'll see right here, second 15, Jalen Hurts. Kind of a trick play right here to Forrestall, but off the screen pass. We'll see right here, our Darius Stewart kind of jump up. He's up top, jump up like he's getting the ball. So off of another play, good, good uh, play call by Lane, but Jalen delivering a strike, get it down, downfield, fourth and one, Bo Scarborough lining up and just getting it done. We're going to run a pitch, which we don't see from a lot of – Nick Saban's team bringing in Mack at linebacker. So we have a linebacker playing fullback who does a great job of sealing off blocks. Old school speed toss right here, fourth and one. This is our best player, our big running back, short yardage goal line. Bo had a great game, but this is a big play right here on fourth down. And then we'll see this, this last play on third nine, which is Jalen's run for a touchdown. Uh, does a good job of just being aware of where the field's at. We'll see on the the end zone, the linebacker out of, out of position. They do a good job of covering it up. But we'll see 52, keep eyes on him right here. He's spying on Jalen Hurts, and for one second, he takes his eyes off Jalen. 
Jalen makes him pay uh, by missing, by missing a, a tackle right here. You can see his eyes get downfield, and as soon as he does, He's beat. He, he's he's over. He's over uh, pursued. Jalen does a good job of breaking tackle and, and doing what he does best, using his legs, and making plays, going to getting the go ahead and touchdown right here when the game was on the line. Okay, next up for Alabama, Mississippi State this weekend. Obviously, Mississippi State, the big storyline coming off a big win, defeating number four Texas A&M, putting up over 570 yards of offense. Is that a concern going into this game, or is this something that Alabama has in the bag? No, I think it's. A big concern because Mississippi State has, has beat us in the past, so they have that confidence. And then beating the number four team out in the country, uh, this is something that I know the coaches will use all week to get ready to go play now the number one team in the country. So, you know, they, they're having confidence. Momentum is with them right now. Obviously, Alabama has a ton, being however many games we've won in a row now. But it's still an SEC West game, and all these teams are good. So we got to get ready for it. Luckily, it's a home game. We've had a, a tough stretch of road games. Uh, throughout the whole season. So the last three at home, uh, and this is, this is a game you need to, to start the, the second half of the season, where that's SEC championship and the playoffs. Hey, JP, maybe they need to call you back for the scout team because obviously it worked last week. Defense played well. I, I think my time on scout team is going to be one and done, though. We'll talk about it later in the week, uh, coming out later on AL.com.